Hello, it's Jeffrey with Real Nifty Vintage. So today I actually want to paint my kitchen. Not only that, I want to wallpaper my kitchen. So I just ordered about a week ago some more wallpaper from goingdecor.com. They have some really cool retro wallpapers. They're not really old or anything like that, but they have that vibe. So I'm gonna show you what I got in just a second for the wall. I'm only going to do wallpaper on this one wall right here. It's gonna pack a punch, I hope, because I don't wanna do wallpaper everywhere. So the wall that that door is on, and only that wall, I cannot get my thing. <laughs> there, so this wall here, up there, and then down behind the refrigerator right here. So here's the wallpaper that I chose. It's really cool. Has strawberries, little leaves, some flowers with a white background. So it's really fresh. It has like a, like a very fun mid 40s, early 50s vibe to me, which I love, absolutely love that time frame. And I just think it's really cute. So I got this big thing of paper here. So yeah, you know, when I moved into this house in, I think it was late 2015, I think, I don't know, it's hard to remember all this stuff. Uh, I, painted, I painted all of the walls gray. Now, you've watched in some other videos where I mentioned that I painted that wall white. Hard to tell, there we go, let's get that white balance fixed. So that is white, that whole wall. And then over here I painted that wall white and then that one pink, like a salmon color coral. And this is still gray. It's just, I'd like to paint it white up here above these, uh, this bulkhead here and get that kind of done and then just do that. Yeah, I'm over the gray. That was a really popular thing back whenever I did it. And I, at the time, I thought that I was going to have it gray for many, many, many years and it was gonna be a solid choice to paint everything this basic gray color. It's, I'm like, oh, this is the new beige, it's timeless. I'm just sick of it. So here are my tools. A Valspar Pro contractor coat. And then we've got here a flathead screwdriver and a what looks like two inch paintbrush. All right, so it's about 6.30 at night. I usually don't come down here this late and do really any work. I like to do my work in the morning, but Aaron went to a basketball game with his dad at the high school. So I figured I would come down and photograph all of these items here on the table because they've been setting for a little bit, uh, more like two weeks, I think. But I, yeah, I really need to get these off of here. So what my plan is, I'm actually going on a cruise on the 11th of January until the 21st. Yeah, so that'll be a really interesting cruise. I've never been on one before, however, my parents are taking us on it. So I can't even remember where all we're going. That's pretty bad. Um, yeah, you know, this is probably the best time of year to go on a cruise just because of how slow it is online and everything. And uh, so I shouldn't really be too worried about it. But, you know, there is some development happening. As you know, you know, I'm trying to work on getting another booth and that luckily has been delayed a little bit. So that's okay. But I would like to get these items here photographed and then I wanna make the drafts, the complete drafts and just not list them until I'm back. And the rationale with that is that the less items I have for sale, the less people will be ordering things while I'm on the, while I'm on the trip. So I've heard negative things about putting your shop on vacation. And on Etsy, you can do that. You can put them on vacation, but apparently what that does is it removes all of your listings from search. And in itself, that's pretty negative. I don't know if it removes it from Google, but I would probably imagine so. I don't also know how long it takes after you bring it back off of vacation for all of your listings to get re listed on Google. I know on Etsy it would be pretty instantaneous, but to get them relisted on Google for the results, I'm not sure how that works. Um, I'm probably overthinking it, but I know we went on a trip, was earlier this year, I can't even remember now. We went on a trip, oh, I think it was October. We went on a trip to Disney World and we were only gone on that one for about a week. And that's what I did, I put my shop, I kept it open, but what I did is I adjusted my time 
so that I did not ship it out in a day. I shipped it out. I sh- uh, my turnaround time was like a week and a half at the latest. And then as we drew closer, I changed the shipping time so that it reflected the actual time that it would be going out. So yeah, that's probably what I'm going to do this time just so that I don't have to put my shop on vacation. But I have a tote here full of items as well that need to be listed. But this is what I'm going to go for tonight. So it's about 630. Uh, this will take me probably an hour to photograph all of this. It's roughly 40 things. And then throughout the next couple days, I'm going to go ahead and create the full active or the full drafts with all information in there so that whenever I return, all I have to do is click a button and they'll be live. So that's what I have planned for now. So also going on down here, I've been in the process of pulling things from my online Etsy store and I've been pulling things that have been underperforming, things that have been on there for a while. Uh, also items that just are not really worth it. So if it's like $12 with free shipping, yeah, that's not really that worth it. And especially if it's getting close to no views. So I've been looking at the statistics on certain things and pulling them as I need to. And those items for the most part are going to be sold in my booth or at least try to be sold in my booth. A lot of them fit the criteria for what I'm doing, that 1950s, 60s thing um, and so on. I know it's kind of a loose era. I have like, think literally any vintage items from the 70s and earlier would be acceptable in the booth in that booth that I'm trying to make which but the booth itself is going to look like a 1950s kitchen but the items in it will just be retro vintage all that so uh, it's just kind of too hard to get everything 1950s and I don't even think that there's a huge market out there at least in our area only looking for 1950s things so Freeze me up, freeze me up a little bit to be able to do that. Stuff like this, for instance, some 1940s uh, little sherbet cups, which are Hazel Atlas, I believe. So something like that could technically go in there. So could these hens on nests because they're cool and they have that throwback. Uh, so anyways, I'm blabbing about that, irrelevant. So I've been pulling things off of my online and that's what I've been doing a little bit. I still have some more that I wanna pull off of there. I just don't know when I want to do it. And then I have items to pull from my two booths that I already have right now. My booth number one and booth number two. I have two antique booths. Eight by eight is the size of those. But the problem is I don't have enough regular items to replace what I take out. So, yeah, I think I have just about everything I need. But I keep obsessing about it. Like, oh, I need more. I need more. And the problem with that is that there's just really no good sourcing opportunities right now this time of year. Auctions are pretty dismal, hard to come by. Estate sales are next to nothing. Um, what else is there? Well, yard sales, obviously there are no yard sales. And where else do I go? Well, not really much else. I do flea markets, the outdoor flea markets and things like that not really any of those going on and that just leaves antique store shopping and thrift store shopping which i've been doing but the problem with those two forms of buying is that they're pretty selective much more selective than even thrift store buying because you are paying a higher price theoretically but those items generally are going to be bought to with the intent of selling them online because that's where the market would be not all the time, but most of the time. So the sourcing opportunities right now are very, very slim. And that makes it sort of hard to get things together for another third booth. I am going to work on getting this organized. Organized, it's pretty organized, yes. But I want to, like I said, edit out things that are not necessary anymore and remove things around a little bit so that I have a clear pockets of where I can put new things just for my own sanity but yeah I mean things are selling uh, as far as December sales I've had a pretty strong month I think it was actually stronger than last December and that's interesting because I haven't really listed much in December 
as you know, I just told you, I'm, I haven't listed anything for at least two weeks, I think. I mean, I think I've listed here and there maybe, maybe 10 things in the last three weeks. It's ridiculous. Oh, but you know, the, the problem, it's a motivation thing. The problem is this is literally all I have waiting to go online. And like I just told you, I don't have a lot of sourcing opportunities. So in my mind, I'm like, okay, I'll go ahead and if I list everything, I it's completely within my power to list all of this stuff within three or four days. And yeah, it would take a lot out of me, you know, it'd be like, nonstop, but I could do it. But then what? I, then I have nothing. So it's sort of this false what's the word false security blanket of like oh I still got stuff well once it's listed I don't but um yeah I just need to probably break out of that list this stuff and then worry about that on another day and it would be more motivation and incentive to get out there and try to find some really good stuff to list online so that's my motivational <laughs> talking for the day oh anyways I've talked enough though literally and I'm going to start uh, and get these things photographed all right, so there's the second coat right there, and then there is like the first coat. So I probably could pass with just one more coat. And knowing me how lazy I am with painting, I might. <laughs> oh. All right, I am really happy with the way that it turned out. I am all done with the wallpaper. I think I'm all done painting. Technically, I do need to do one more coat, but I just don't feel like it. So it probably will end up being only two coats. It kind of has this Adobe, I don't know, <laughs> natural look to it because there's brush strokes and a slight gray tinge showing through, ah, uh, whatever. But yeah, I'm happy with the way that this wallpaper turned out. There's one area that I need to work on and I guess touch up with a little white paint and that's that little sliver of gray showing right there. I didn't feel like putting a a little tiny tiny piece of wallpaper that's where it ended right there unfortunately I didn't feel like doing a tiny little piece right there so I'll just paint it white uh, this is all done behind here I did make that look nice from the other side you can see see I got it all done all right so next thing is tr maybe get a new refrigerator 1950s style it'll be smaller of course but it would really look awesome here now 